I was asked a couple of weeks ago if I could do a cow in watercolour by Michelle um, so I hope this is the kind of thing that Michelle had in mind if there's anything that you particularly want me to do in the future just pop it in the comments below and I'll try and get around to doing it uh, you know whatever subject you fancy um, but today we're going to do this cow so I've drawn her in ink just really so that the camera picks her up for you but if you prefer you could draw her in pencil and then erase your pencil lines once you've done your painting so there's a few things to think about when you're drawing cows one is how their ears are attached to the head just look carefully at that um, you know they've got this very characteristic shape to their ear there I usually find with the Holstein cattle the ears are usually a similar size to this centre part of the head so you're sort of in thirds really the other thing is to make um, get a good shape with the eye socket so when you're drawing the eyes think about the shape of the eye socket not just the shape of the eye a lot of people put cow's eyes sort of in the middle facing forward they're much more on the side of the head the other thing is they've got when especially when they're sat down like this they've got quite a lot of spare skin on the neck when they're relaxed so you've got usually got this line coming down here for that think about where the shoulders are even though she's sitting down you can still see where her shoulders are you can see her knees here and her feet because she's although she's got them tucked up underneath here, you can still see those and then the shapes some of the shapes of a tummy and things will get in more with the shadows afterwards with the paint okay so I'll just show you the picture I was using this is um, it was this one here that I was doing and that's just some in our field a while ago I've just I take my own pictures and pop them in in a book so that um, I've got them later for reference so it was just that one there that I was drawing and as you can see she's a very spotty cow white and spotty so to begin with I'm going to do the background and I'm going to do it quite dark because she's white I'm going to do quite a dark background so that she shows up so, to be, so I'm just going to start by putting some water onto the paper around her and leaving her dry so this is quite a large brush because I don't want to get fussy with the detail in the background it's going to be quite a simple background Because this pad is um, quite a light watercolour paper, because it's a cheap one that I use for practising, you might see at the edges I've taped it down. So I'm using it sort of like a block, although it's a pad of watercolour paper. By putting some masking tape around the edges, it makes it um, into more of a block. So like I said, just putting water all over, except for on the cow. Okay, and I've made up three mixes of colour. I've made up, this one is ultramarine with Payne's grey, so quite dark background for the sky. This one is sap green and ultramarine to make a dark green. And this is some grey made out of ultramarine and burnt sienna just to put some shadows underneath her. So I'll start with the sky. So because we've got a nice big brush, we can get it covered straight away and then just come carefully around her ears again because it's a good brush you've got that nice tip to it and you're not going over her too much and because we've already wet the paper we're not going to get any harsh lines where it's drying you know towards the edges it's all just going to blend away I don't usually do a flat wash for a sky because can you see where where there's areas where there's a less pigment it can look like it's clouds coming through and things anyway so it's quite nice just to leave that quite sort of random okay and give my brush a good wash out you can see I'm doing it quite quickly so that this paper's still wet and then pick the green up 
imagine that the field's up there somewhere and again it doesn't matter if it goes into that blue it doesn't matter if some of it goes onto her because she's got grass all around her there at the bottom And then lastly, this grey. And this grey is slightly thicker than the green was. And that's just to make some shadows, shadows of the grass and shadows of, of her. She's a large animal so she's going to be casting some shadow on there. Okay, and then we'll completely leave that to dry before we paint her. Okay, so now the background's dry, we're going to move on to doing the cow. And I'm going to swap brushes and get a smaller brush. So I'll just, sorry, I'll just tell you first, the background was done with this one and that's a size 10 round. Okay, so again I'm going to start by wetting her. You don't have to do this, some people prefer to paint what we call wet on dry which means that you would paint straight onto your dry paper and build it up in layers um, and that's absolutely fine I just like the effect of wet in wet where you get some so much softer edges where they just merge into each other like we've got here and I'm not putting masses of water on it's just to make the paper damp like I say, so we've got those soft edges. You see, I just splosh some water there onto the loo, so we'll just get rid of that. Okay, so with watercolour, we use the white of the paper for the lightest part. So we build up from the whitest areas to the darkest areas. So, and the idea is to leave the lightest areas as white paper. Now you can use masking fluid to do this. I prefer actually just to leave it white and paint round it. Um, so it's ju that's just entirely up to you, but you can be, you know, really careful and just look first of all at the painting, and uh, sorry, at the photograph and see where you need to be leaving the paper white. Now it's very difficult with a, a white animal to think about the colours of the shadows. Um, quite often a pale bluey grey is a nice one to use as a shadow on white. So she's got quite a bit of shadow here. Cast by her own leg that is really. So sorry I should have said I've added some extra water to this the mix that I made up for doing the shadow before. So that's ultramarine. with some burnt sienna. Can you see there, although I've made that paper damp, it is already starting to dry, so I'm just going to get a damp brush and just soften that edge off there. I'm just looking at the size of this brush, this is a size 3. Yep. So we're going to be getting a lot more detail with this brush. So under here is all shadow and all down here is shadow because she's got quite a big head and that's casting shadow underneath. But not her leg, her legs catching the, the sunlight. She's actually got a white face with black ears. And she's catching the sun down this side of her face, so we're going to leave that side white. Put 
this side in the shadow. And again, just softening that edge off there. Okay, so we now need to go a little bit darker with that shadow. Actually, what I'll do now is put all her uh, markings in before we do any more of the, the shade. So I'll make a black, but I will, I will make it out of the same two colours, the Ultramarine and the Burnt Sienna, and make it nice and thick and dark. Okay, so like I said, her ears are black. So get that in first. Taking care to go around that tag that she's got. And she's got some spots down this side of her face and down her neck here. Okay, and where a markings bled into that shadow there, we'll just again blend that in. Because that's going to be a much stronger shadow under there anyway, where her, her neck is. And then we can sharpen the line of the actual markings up again later when it's dry. Okay, like I say, if you if you prefer to work, leave each I'm just carrying on with the painting because, um, for the sake of the video, and because I don't want to, and because I like working wet and wet. But if you want to leave it between each stage, between each colour to dry, or dry it off with a hairdryer in between each each colour, then uh, feel free to give it a go that way. Okay, so you can see we've sort of put a little bit of shadow in, but um, we need we need more than that. So the darkest, keep looking at the picture and look into where the darkest shadows are. And it's very dark under here. It's obviously not a lot of light getting underneath the tummy. And down the side of this leg and over here. And down here. said because of her neck there and if we look at her head it's darkest under here and down this side I don't know if you heard that then, but there was a, actually a cow mooing out of the window. They've just been let out after being inside for the winter, so they go a little bit mad. They enjoy being let out for the first time. So 
So all I'm doing now is keep looking back at the picture, looking where the lights and the darks are and being careful not to completely get rid of all the, those bits of white paper on the top of the cow especially. Where the highlights are. At the moment, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a tickle. At the moment I'm thinking they're perhaps a little bit too blue. I think the ultramarine I've used with that burnt sienna has not quite gone as dark as I would like. So I'm going to make a bit more and pop some Payne's grey in. I'm just sort of blending things with a damp brush at the minute. So I'm going to go slightly darker by adding Payne's Grey to that mix. We'll just pop her ear tag in and this is bright yellow this is a cadmium yellow and I've just got that straight out of the pan nice bright yellow for a ear tag and I'm going to just get a tiny bit of pink so a light red with plenty of water and just add a touch to the top of her nose and a touch even though it's in shadow a touch in there where a rudder is. Let's take another look at her eyes, get some of this shadow in to get the shape of her eye more. And this is what's building up a shape. This is going to build up the shape of her nose, the shape of her eyes. It's just getting those shades in the right place. Tones. So again, underneath the mouth, on the neck, and on this shoulder here. Just keep building it up gradually. So although she's white, and we hopefully can still tell that she's a white animal, We've got a, quite a bit of colour and tone on here. And of course, watercolours are transparent, so even if we go over the top of some of these, um, you know, markings that we've already put on, they're still going to be there, they're not going to get lost. If you want to learn more about tone, um, it just occurred to me, I did do a blog earlier this week, I think it was Monday, um, all about tone and highlights. So if you want to have a look at that, I'll put the link up here to my blog. So like I said with watercolour, we think about the, the lightest tones being the white of the paper and then going through to the darkest shadows. And don't forget that when you're putting your watercolours on, they will dry a lot lighter than when they go on. Usually about 50%. So don't be frightened to go dark. Particularly, you know, some areas where there isn't any light getting there at all, like under this leg, make sure you go dark because that's going to be what makes the, the lighter areas look light, that contrast. So again, a thicker paint now. 
in some of these darker areas. Missed one of her markings there, she's got a mark in there as well. She so can put that in now. And just to lift this picture in a couple of places, I'm going to add, I did have some of the cadmium that I used quite neatly for her ear tag, but I will just pop a little bit of sunshine on her back as well, that yellow, just lift the painting a little. We've still got those um, nice white areas that we've left. Um, and as I've got some of this yellow still left there, I'm going to pop a few bits of grass in with the yellow. Again, it's just lifting the whole painting up a little bit. I'll get a bigger brush, the one that we had before, if I can find it. And actually, I'm going to make a little bit more of that cadmium up with a, a little bit of water. This is completely dry. And can you see how putting just a little glaze of quite watery yellow over there gives, just brightens the whole thing up. I'm going to even going to pop some of that on her tummy here as well, I think. like that brush. <laughs> okay so again as with um, most of the things that we do on here I could go on and keep putting extra detail in and going <coughs> excuse me I've got a tickle today um, going with more and more shadow and keep looking back, seeing where the shadows are, seeing where the highlights are and we could carry on for a while um, but I think actually I'll just leave her now without too much detail in her and all of this I'm just doing now is just with a damp brush and often when I finish I do also look to see if there's anywhere where I've lost any highlights just here perhaps on a back leg if you've got a good stiff brush you can sometimes just lift that back to the white paper and then just okay so I think we'll leave her at that like I say, you could go on with the detail. You could put more detailed grass in the foreground if you wanted to. Just building it up. Like I say, watercolour is transparent, so you can build it up. I'll just give you an example with this, you know, the same green that we had before. You could pop that over the top and build up those grasses. So the level of detail that you carry on to do is really entirely up to you. And again, you could get carried away a bit more shadowing so it's a good tonal exercise to look at where those shadows are 
And if you're doing a different, a different cow, perhaps one that's all brown, a beef cow, just think about getting a darker mix of the same colour and keep increasing those shadows. So start with your lightest colours, leaving the paper white, then your mid-tones and then your darks. Okay, so let me know how you get on with that. I hope you found it useful and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.